I wanted to go to sleep. I really did. I need to show you space line. I can't sleep otherwise, I guess. Let's launch Emacs. Let's talk about the mode line. Okay, I figured there is a lot of information on the mode line. You can hover your mouse over anything. Like as you can see, your buffer coding system then buffers read only, buffers modified, a current directory is local, and so on and so forth. Now then, there's the buffer name. Um, size indication mode is actually I don't I don't even know what this is. Then we have our line and uh, the column, our major mode, our minor modes, um, the time. This is the yeah exactly the system load average. Um, it's all cluttered. It's difficult to really read. Why why does it feel the necessity to display all those minor modes? I don't know. Uh, what I do know is that we can fix it. Okay, um, but first of all, uh, let me show you a different mode line. Uh, I use the Spacemax theme, and again, I don't like Spacemax, but their theme is fantastic. And right at the beginning of this series, or well, not really at the beginning, but the, the video where we installed the theme, I said that I like uh, three or four out of the things, no, actually it's three things in Spacemax. One being the theme, the second one, well, that's the mode line that it uses. Let's install it. It's actually quite simple to install. It's, it's just a package. It's in it's in Melpa. So let's visit our config. Um, do we have anything mode line related? We don't. Okay, let's make a new category. Mode line. Call this baseline. That's what it's called. Oops, I forgot we have the new Emacs list template. Pretty obvious what we have to do. Uh, we have to ensure it and put the configuration. We're going to, to use the keyword require to make sure that spaceline config is also initialized. Then we are going to set queue. This is um, a measure to prevent a bug from happening. Power line, if you used Vim or ZSH, or I don't know, maybe you used Powerline and Emacs. You don't know what the separators are. There is a issue that some people have that if they don't set a default separator, that the default is going to change every time they reload it or every time it updates. I'm not sure, but I had this issue. Let us fix it. Powerline default separator. Oops. Okay, and well, the argument is going to be good. This is the default one actually. And now space line, space max theme. That's it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Let's get out of here. And behold, behold. Will it be just enabled? Do we have to restart? I don't think we have to. Ah, much better. Much, much better. That's way easier to read. Okay, we don't have any, like, um, what is this? 6,222, what? Is this the amount of characters in all buffers? I don't know, I actually have this disabled. Uh, buffer name, major mode, minor modes, uh, you know, as you can see, everything is there, it's just nicely spaced out. There's separators in between. Um, it just looks nicer. The other thing we can do to make it look nicer is get rid of some of the minor modes that we have. Okay. Now you don't have to do it. If you like having all the minor modes listed here, then you know by all means, sure. I I don't. There's some that I need to be reminded of that I have them. Uh, others not so much. So we're going to use a package called diminish. And what diminish does is it hides um, minor modes from the mode line. They are still enabled, they are still working, but they are not displayed and shoved in your face all the time. So, actually, yeah, let's, let's edit this here. Let's use the package, diminish. Um, I don't have screen key enabled. Why am I like this? Where is screen key? Screen key even, yeah, there it is. Okay, 
use package diminish and share t and let's say init and you can now use the keyword diminish to well, diminish minor modes you just have to find the mode for instance hungry delete mode i'll need to be enabled i'll, I'll need to be reminded that i have this enabled uh, yeah beautiful um auto completion kicking in hungry delete mode okay what else do we diminish do we diminish more let's diminish some more i actually have a long list in my own config yeah this beacon mode let's get rid of this and the last one i don't know which key mode yeah let's get rid of this okay that's that's enough for now which key modes disabled let's save this reload this um yeah they're all gone the only thing that's left is rainbow mode and support mode let's let's manage those as well actually let's get rid of all these well what's it called support mode and let's get rid of what what was the other one rainbow rainbow mode okay i always forget the names rainbow mode that's cool okay now that everything is disabled and all we have is you know the actually important stuff did i destroy the setup again i did sweet uh, okay that's fine again crisis averted okay now that we have this set up um, i want to show you a few cool packages um, because we are going to slowly be migrating from this mm, vm with this setup to my own personal configuration so i can show you stuff you know from my own heavily heavily configured emacs and yeah um We'll soon not need to be here anymore. Now allow me to take a sip. That's good, cold brew. Okay, one of the things that I really like using is uh, the menu. Sometimes I need to launch external software. Occasionally, Emacs just isn't enough. And if you have used, if you have used a window manager like iFree. PSPWM open box. Um, you probably use an external launcher, Rofi, the menu maybe. Um, do people use anything else? I don't know. Maybe I don't think they do. I don't know any others. And what the, the menu is is there's actually a package for Emacs called the menu. It's a clone of the menu for you know for Zorg. The difference is that it doesn't show up up top with a list. It shows up in the mini buffer. Now the cute thing is, it show, it uses IDO, so it, much like the real thing, it saves, well, actually the real D menu doesn't do that, but the IDO version does. Um, it saves your most used applications. So I personally have um, key bindings to launch the software that I use most, like super key and tab uses, you know, it launches the browser, or super key and uh, D launches Discord. And so on and so forth. Because with the menu, um, you know, the menu really is it really is nice. I used to use BSPWM, which is a window manager, and I used to run the menu, and I had it bound to control oh, super and space, which is the default. I really like this behavior, so I decided to do the same thing for for Emacs. And it's very simple to get. All you have to do is bind it to something, and I, as I said, I bound it to super space. Um, that's it. Nothing else to it. So let's save this. Oh, oops, let's reload it. And when you hit control uh, super space now, it, I mean, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work well in GNOME, or does it? Uh, it doesn't work well with GNOME. That's why. Why is life difficult? Why does this have to have? <laughs> Come on, man. Why won't it just work? Man, I don't like GNOME. 
Why did I choose no? I can assure you that this works because I use this uh, actually. Hang on. What if I... <sighs> okay. Um, you'll have to trust me. This works and it's going to be very, very useful in the next video. Because the next video I'm going to be talking about EXWM and we will kind of, we will, we will legitimately need the menu. If you choose to, you know, follow me on the journey of learning how to use Emacs as a window manager. One last thing that I think is kind of cute is called Simon and it's a very, very tiny um, performance manager. Uh, I'm not really sure what to think of it, but it's, it's really close to like, like I don't have HTOP installed, I don't like using TOF, so I used Simon for the very very basic performance monitoring, and it just works, as the package legitimately just called Simon, it's so sure that it installed, bind it to, uh, I had it bound to SH. bind it to Simon mode. You can have it just enabled. You can do like in it and then enable it globally, but it annoys me sometimes. So, um, yeah, I don't have it um, enabled globally because I don't think it's. I don't think it's necessary. Why does Why does the menu not just work? I don't understand this. Let's reload our config and let me show you what Simon does. Uh, Super H meant for. Let's, let's call it manually, shall we? Okay, Simon mode. Now if you wait a second and check the, um, the menu buffer, it shows you the memory percentage that's used, that's used CPU. I'm not, like, I normally only have CPU and memory because that's all I care about. And, uh, you know, like, traffic, that's not really, you know, that's, I'm not really big on this. Um, since I use Gen 2 on a day-to-day -day basis, I actually care about CPU usage. But that's it. Can I call the menu manually? Yeah, this is what the menu looks like. This is it. You can do like fire, fox, hit enter. Uh, God, is this going to even work? Yeah, there it is. There's Firefox. Beautiful. And when you close the application, it also kills the uh, buffer. There's, this is a normal uh, standard output buffer, so you can even launch like command line software with it, some of it at least. Um, I don't know why the hotkeys don't work, I mean, GNOME just sucks. But they are going to work in the next video, hopefully, hopefully we are going to be <laughs> able to pack all, um, all of what we are trying to do in one video. Uh, and I'll see you back then. Is this everything I want to show you? Yes, it is. You can, oh, you can, by the way, add stuff to the diminishing. You can diminish more modes. You now you can decide what modes you want to show and which ones you don't want to show. You can, you know, enable Simon mode globally. You know, it's, it's your life. Thank you for watching. Uh, the next episode is going to be the longest, probably, and the most awesome. So I hope you stay tuned because I, I'm already pumped. I'm pretty much going to, you know, recorded in just a second. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.